If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own first before listening on. What we'll do first is draw a free body diagram showing the forces that are acting on mass 2. We have the downward gravitational force, which we can label as m2 times g. We have this pushing force that's acting down at an angle, and in a moment we're going to break that pushing force into its x and y components. We have the frictional force, which is opposing the motion of mass 2, and we can label that Fk. And then also, since mass 2 is connected to this string, that string is pulling back on it. M2, and so we're going to have a force pulling back on the block, and we can call that T. Finally, we have the normal force that's pointing straight up, which we can call Fn. Now, as noted, we need to take this force F and break it into its x and y components. We can see that the y component would be pointing straight down, and then the x component would be pointing straight to the right. And since the y component would be opposite from the angle that's marked theta, we would use the sine function. So that's going to become f sine of theta for the y component. And then since the x component is adjacent to that angle, we're going to call that f cosine theta. And now that we have drawn all of the forces acting on this box, we're going to apply Newton's laws in both the x and y direction. Newton's second law, I should say. So for the x direction, we would have the f cosine theta pushing force. We would have the tension force. And because it's pointing in the leftward direction, we're going to call that minus t. And then we have minus the kinetic frictional force also because it's pointing to the left. And we would set that equal to the mass of block 2 times its acceleration. Now over to the y direction, we have the upward normal force as well as the downward f sine theta and the downward m2g. And certainly the block is not accelerating in the y direction, so we can set this equal to zero. Now looking at the second equation, if we added the two negative terms over to the right, we would see that the normal force is equal to f sine theta plus m2 times g. So we're going to take this expression for normal force and we're going to actually substitute it back into the first equation and we can do that because fk we recall is equal to a coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by a normal force and so we've made that substitution into the first equation and of course as we just said the normal force can be replaced with f sine theta plus m2g and so this equation is one that we're going to hold on to now let's look over at mass m1 and for that mass is free body diagram, we're going to have the gravitational force, which will be m1 times g. We have the tension in the string that's pulling m1 along, and so we can mark that as being t. There's also the frictional force that's pointing to the left. We can call that fk, and then we have the normal force pointing straight up, fn. Now, we got to be careful about fk. It's going to be a different frictional force, so... We're going to call that fk with a little prime symbol, so keep that in mind. We'll go over to Newton's second law, and we'll go in the x direction first. So we would have t minus the kinetic frictional force is equal to mass 1 times its acceleration. And then in the y direction, we would have the fn minus m1 times g is equal to 0. Remember, the box is not accelerating in the y direction. We're going to make the same moves that we did before. We'll solve this for the normal force, so that's going to be m1 times g, and then we'll substitute this back into the first equation. First, we'll replace the kinetic frictional force with mu times normal force. So here is mu, and then we'll multiply by the normal force, which we just figured out was m1 times g. Now, what we want to note is that because the blocks are attached to the string, they're going to be accelerating at the same rate. With each other as each other and so that means the accelerations are going to be the same which is why we just call the acceleration a in each formula as opposed to let's say a2 and a1 no the accelerations are the same so we've just used a we can solve these equations for a so in the first case we could divide both sides by m2 so that it cancels out on the right hand side and then we'll do the same thing over in this equation we'll divide both sides by m1 so it will cancel out on the right hand side so we can take this expression for acceleration and set it equal to this expression for acceleration. And our goal, of course, is to find the tension. So we're trying to solve this for t. It's a little bit 
thorny, but I guess what we could do first is multiply both sides of the equation by m1, and that way it'll cancel out on the left-hand side. And then we can multiply both sides of the equation by m2, so that it will cancel out on the right-hand side. Make sure we'll put parentheses around this term right here. Now we could distribute m2 into the parentheses, and then distribute m1 into the brackets. Be careful how you do this. m1 is going to be multiplied to this term right here, also to t, and then to this term here. Let's get the tension terms together. So this term right here can be added over to the left-hand side. And then this term right here can be added over to the right-hand side. On the left side, we can factor out the tension t so that we have m2 plus m1. And that's going to equal the right-hand side. And then we can divide both sides of the equation by the term m2 plus m1 so that it will cancel out on the left-hand side. And here we have the expression for tension. We can now just plug in the known values. This can probably be further simplified, but it's, it's also probably easier just to plug in the values. So we have the force, which was 20 newtons, multiplied by m1, which was 2 kilograms. The angle was given to us as 35 degrees. The coefficient of kinetic friction was stated to be 0.2. And m2 was 1 kilogram. And then, of course, g is 9.8. So we'll fill in the rest of the numbers. And if we very carefully plug that into our calculators, or you might want to simplify it a little bit step by step, you should get about 9.4 newtons. So this is the correct answer for the tension in the string.